Hi, Bill from CJ Pony Parts. If you're a subscriber to our YouTube channel, you're probably aware we love adding modern amenities to our Mustangs while still keeping that classic look. One area this has been difficult to do in the past has been power windows. Most kits require an aftermarket switch assembly, which takes away from the classic look of your interior. Well, today, we're going to show you how to install power windows in your classic Mustang while keeping your interior 100% original. These power window kits are available for all 64 through 73 coupe convertible as well as fastback Mustangs. They include detailed instructions, new regulators and scissors, power motors, switch assemblies, as well as all necessary wiring. The most important part of these particular kits is going to be the regulator controllers here. It's going to use a stock handle, look completely original. When installed in the vehicle, when you push it up, the window will go up. When you push it down, the window is going to go down. For this installation, you need a Phillips head screwdriver, right angle screwdriver, 3 8 ratchet, half inch socket, 7 16 socket, 3 8 socket, short extension, 2.5 millimeter Allen key, pick, panel removal tool, punch, drill, right angle drill, 8 inch drill bit, 13 64 drill bit, 7 8 uni bit or 7 8 drill bit, saw, multimeter, wire crimpers, wire cutters, test lead, relay, primary wire, and an inline fuse, marker, flashlight, and safety glasses. We're going to be installing the kit for all four windows in our 1968 Mustang Coupe. If you're looking to just do the front windows, you can order the fastback kit, which will fit your coupe or convertible doors as well. We're going to start by removing the door panel so we can remove our original regulators. We'll start with the two bolts that hold the armrest on. I'll remove the door handle. Window cranks have these little covers over them. We're going to use a razor blade to get the cover off. We can unscrew it. Now we're going to remove the bezel for our remote mirror. There is a tool to do this. A lot of times a small screwdriver will work. In our case, you can probably even get it off by hand as well. We're going to use our door panel removal tool to remove our door panel. Now you want to put the crank back on and roll the window partially up. You want to go up until this screw here is visible. There's going to be three of these screws total. They're going to actually hold that channel to the window frame. We found removing those three screws is one of the easiest ways to get the regulator out of the car. This one's easy to get to. If you look further back in the door, there's a hole cut out for the rear one, and there's another hole forward for the front. Once you get the screws out, it will release. You want to make sure you hold on to the glass. It is spring loaded, so once it pops out, it is going to go further forward up here. Slide the channel off, and then slide it backward to remove it from the regulator. Now we'll remove our channel. The glass may stay, but just to be safe, we're going to carefully lower it down. And we'll let it sit in the door. Now we're going to remove the two retaining nuts for the rear part of the regulator. Now we'll simply just push that through. And I'll work on the front. Next we'll remove the four bolts that hold the regulator to the door. Now you want to hold the regulator as you loosen the last one. At this point, you'll want to slide the glass up and have somebody hold on to it to make sure it doesn't drop so you can remove the regulator. Since there are no wires going to the door for lights or speakers, we're going to have to drill holes and actually use the grommets supplied in our kit. 
We're gonna start by drilling a hole in the door. We're gonna drill it between the hinges here. And then we're gonna drill one into the side of our cap. Now we have our pilot hole drilled. We're gonna open it up to seven eighths. Now that we have the hole in the door, the next step is to put a hole inside the kick panel area to get the wire inside the car. To do so, we'll have to remove the door sill plates first and then remove our kick panel. Now remove the screws for our kick panel speakers. And slide off the kick panel. The grommet provided for the wiring harness is meant to come down and inward, so you want to make sure the hole you drill on the inside is down and inward from the one on the outside. You usually want to go right through this slot here this is the best place to go. Now we're going to mount the switch assembly to our door. This is going to fit just like the factory one does right in this opening here. Basically, be like that when it's installed. It has to fit between the regulator, so it's got to mount at an angle where the base is right between the regulator and the wiring harness is pointing away. We'll have to mark the holes because we have to drill to mount this bracket. The kit comes with a paper template to drill these holes. We've actually found you can carefully remove the rear plate from the switch and use that as a template. The metal is a lot easier to keep lined up than the paper. Carefully remove that and put our switch assembly aside. This hole here, you want centered over the factory hole for the handle. And you want this piece here centered between these two mounting holes for the regulator. Before we drill the holes, we're gonna put our switch back together. All right, now we'll drill these out. The hardware for mounting the switch is included. They thread it into the back of the switch. You want to remove these three screws, and when you mount it, they get screwed in the front here. Now we'll wire up the switch before we install it. The outside spades on both ends are going to be your motor wires, which will be the blue and the brown. The secondary spade going inward is going to be the two black wires on each side for your grounds. And the center two here are going to be for your positives. We want to install it so the harness is facing away. The power and ground get fed into the car. And this harness here is going to go down to our power window motor. Start by feeding the power and ground out of the door. Just switch into place and then we'll screw it down with the supplied hardware. Now we're ready to install the new power regulator. This can be a little bit difficult because there's a lot more stuff involved with getting a fish down to the door. If you had trouble getting the old regulator out, it's going to be even harder to get in because the power motor is located on the front. You want to make sure before you get it all the way in the door, you do plug this in to the motor. Because once it's seated, it's going to be down in the corner here and you're not going to be able to reach it. The window regulator is going to ship with the safety bolt installed. You want to make sure you remove this before you put the regulator into the car because the window will not work. Start by putting the motor end in first. Sort of tilting at this point, you probably want to plug in your motor as soon as you can reach it. it over far enough to get these two back bars through. 
bring it back and get it up into place. Get these hand tight for now just to get it located. And our regulator's in. Now we're going to install the rear roller channel. You want to clean these up once you remove them from the car and then apply some new grease before you reinstall them. Slides on the rear roller here. I'm going to slide it on and we'll put it up into place. Reinstall the nuts and tighten them down. Now we're going to tighten the four bolts that hold the regulator to the door. Next we'll move on to the front channel here. Same idea, you want to clean it up once you have it out of the car, then add in a fresh coat of grease before you install it. This channel is going to ride on this front roller here, then another one on the back. And that's actually what's going to bolt the regulator to our door glass. So do is slide it in, just slide it onto the front roller first, and then slide it onto the rear. And for now, we're just going to let it rest on there. Now we have to get the regulator at the right height so the holes are visible in this channel to screw it into our window frame. With the old regular, that was easy. Turn the handle, we get it where we need to go. Now that we have power, we have to get power to the motor so we can move it up and down and be able to adjust it. At this point, you can hardwire it in, or you can do what we did. We ran some test leads to the battery just to make sure everything works in the window before we actually hardwire it to our car. Now we have power to the motor, put our window crank in place, push it down, you can see our regulator goes down. Push it up, we can get it up. We want to line up with this hole here and this hole here. We're ready to reinstall our glass. We'll lower the glass down until it lines up. Now we'll check our window. Okay. Now we're ready to fish our wires through the conduit to the interior and then we'll move on to the rear windows. Start by fishing the wire through the conduit. Now fish it into the interior. We'll get the boots seated in the holes that we drilled. Now we'll leave the wires hanging here for now. We're gonna do the quarter windows next. We're gonna fish the wires up. They're all gonna get connected together. Moving on to the quarter windows. To get to the quarter window, we'll just start by removing our back seat. Then we can remove these trim panels to access the windows. Remove the retaining nuts for the seat back. Window cranks held on by a small retainer screw on the side. Remove the screws that hold to the body. Slide off the wind lace over here. Now remove our water shield. Start by removing these two bolts here to release the track. Now we'll move on to the four bolts for the regulator.
Now you're gonna release the roll that goes in the bottom of the glass. It's right behind this bar here. So I'm gonna use a pick, put it in, and pull it right up. Once you release the roller, you want to slide the glass up by hand to get it out of the way. Now you can carefully remove your factory regulator. Once you remove the regulator, we're going to have to remove the window as well as the channel to be able to get our new regulator into place. To do that, it's one bolt down here and then two at the top that have to be removed along with the quarter post seal. We recommend putting a little bit of tape on the paint job, that way when you're pulling out the window, you don't scratch your paint. The window's going to have to pivot forward to come out, which is why you have to remove the quarter post seal to give it more room to move. If your quarter post seal is ripped or damaged, now would also be a perfect time to replace it. Ours are in pretty good shape, so we're going to reuse them. To remove the glass, we've got to start by removing the two window stops. One located here, and one located right here. Now you want to slide the glass up and remove the track. We'll start with the lower bolt here. The uppers are through these two holes here. The window has to be all the way up in the frame or you won't be able to see the bolts. Now you want to maneuver the window forward and you can flip it up and out. Now the track comes out the same way. The kit saves you a step with the rear regulators. Your switch is already mounted, so it's one less thing you have to worry about installing. We're gonna test fit first, because this motor here is gonna have a little bit of interference. It's gonna have to require some minor trimming. Okay, everything lines up. The regulator not, has to sit flush against this panel here. It's not going to work properly. The motor is touching this cutout. So we have to cut this section of the bottom of the quarter panel out. The issue for clearance is this bump in right here. We know the regulator is not any wider than these bolts. So basically what we want to do is stay to the inside of them. We'll cut straight up here to the bump. Go across again, stay to the inside of the hole. And back down. Now we'll test fit again. Once everything's lined up, we can install the screws. And our regulator's mounted. You want to make sure your wires are free to move around once everything's tightened down. You don't want to pinch the wire between the regulator and our quarter panel. Our wires are loose, we're ready to move on. Before we reinstall everything, we want to re-grease both the window track as well as both other tracks. Now we're going to reinstall the track. Now we need to hold the window track and get the glass in place. Now the glass is in the track, we'll slide it back up so we get the track mounted to the body. Now we're going to reinstall the window stop. The other stop's a little harder to get to. It's actually now behind the motor right back here. 
you, there is room to get in from this side to hold it, and then you can get a bolt in there and tighten it down. Now we're gonna install the window roller. The roller is gonna go in this channel right at the bottom here, and then the stud from the regulator is gonna pop into place. It's easier to put the roller in the channel and then install the stud. You may have to bump the window up a little bit in the channel to get enough space to get the arm over. And pop it in. Now we're gonna install the secondary channel. Again, we're gonna put the roller in the channel first and get it into place. Now we're ready to test our window. We'll connect 12 volts to our wiring. Grab our handle. Up. And it goes down. Now that our window is working correctly, we can reinstall our quarter post seal. And before we reassemble everything, we're going to put our front window up. We're going to check our alignment. I'm going to make sure you have a good tight seal between your quarter window and your front window. Ours looks pretty good. Make sure also this doesn't catch on the quarter window if it's coming out. Two screws at the top and the one screw at the bottom that hold the track to the body. There's movement there, so you have to adjust your window. That's where you'll want to do it. In our case, we went by the paint markings on those brackets with the original bolts. The alignment's pretty good. Now we can start with the reassembly and the wiring for our power window system. In the case of our ground, it comes with a short wire. We're just going to ground it to bare metal down here at the bottom. The power wire will fish down and run it with our taillight harness up under the dash and connect both powers together. And we're going to drill a small hole for our ground. And we're going to put a zip tie around the motor and the wires just to keep everything together. At this point, you'll want to repeat the process with the passenger side quarter and then the passenger side door. Then we can finish reinstalling our interior. Now we'll reinstall the crank. You want it facing forward. That way up is up and down is down. Now we can start reassembling our door panel. Now we're ready to reinstall our window cranks. The kit includes these Allen head screws, which will work and thread in, but in the case of our 68, the head of the screw sits up too high and the cover's not gonna fit. We're gonna reuse the original screws, which will sit flush enough for our covers to fit, but actually will thread into the new switches as well. Restick on the original disc. Now we'll move on to the wiring. The windows are going to require switched power. Unfortunately, under the dash of your Mustang, there's not going to be anything strong enough to power them without blowing a fuse. So we're going to have to go with a relay. The relay is pretty simple. We're using a five post standard relay. It's going to be available at any auto parts store. You're going to start by connecting a fuse link to the battery itself, run a primary wire to your red lead into your relay. The green wire will get 12 volt switch somewhere underneath our dashboard. The blue wire goes to ground, and the orange and yellow are both powered, which will run our windows. You want to connect the power leads for your windows to the yellow lead from the relay. That's the lead that's going to have 12 volts of current when the relay is open. If you connect to the orange lead, it's only going to have 12 volts when the relay is closed and the ignition's off. We'll start by disconnecting our battery. 
Now we'll connect our primary lead to our battery terminal. You can also connect it to your starter solenoid. And we'll start fishing our wire. We're going to fish our wire down the side and then across. I'm going to go through a factory hole in the firewall. Now we need to tap into a 12 volt switch source. You can hook up the constant if you want. That way you can put the windows up and down when the key's not on. We can also drain the battery pretty fast. We're going to stick with switched. We're having this wire here from the ignition switch to our stereo. We're going to use that. Start by connecting our primary feed from our battery. Now we'll connect our power window leads to our constant power. Look up our 12 volt switch trigger, the wire under the dash that we found earlier. Tie into a factory ground on the dash. We'll go install the fuse and check everything out before we hide our wiring. Key off. Okay, we got nothing. Turn to accessory. Relays open. And our window works like it's supposed to. Now we can hide our wires, reinstall our door sill plate, and reinstall our kick panel. And our installation is finished. there you have it, the modern convenience of power windows while still keeping the look of the factory interior. This isn't the easiest installation, expect to spend two to three hours per window, you'll be back on the road in no time.